The 6-5 is on the road, and we are talking about our favorite subject, and that is AI. There's been huge investments uh, in AI in the industry, on infrastructure, on services, and also from developers making their own programs in addition to uh, enterprise SaaS. Dan, it's been an exciting couple of years here, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a big couple of years, and we've seen so many changes, shifts, inflections, Pat, and we're watching this massive boom of CapEx investment, and of course, everybody's looking on the back end and saying, how does all this investment turn into productivity gains and, and efficiency gains? And, who are going to be the new companies that rise and how are the companies that came out of the first computing era That's right. going to continue to compete? That's right. Uh, the inventor of cloud computing, Amazon Web Services, has made huge investments in all parts of that chain to deliver it to their uh, customers. And I can't think of a better person to have this conversation with to, to check in than newly appointed uh, AWS CEO, Matt Garman. Matt, welcome to the 6.5. Thank you for having me, nice to see you guys. Yeah, Matt, it's great to have you on. Um, as Patrick said, AWS really was at the forefront of this entire movement. And now we're entering, you know, kind of a new era. You, you kind of heard me say that, you know, I call it the great reset of compute is, you know, what's been built hasn't completely changed or gone away, but we've seen really significant fundamental changes in this kind of GPU and computing era. I'm curious from your take, you know, there's the traditional competitive set and you of course being the leader in the market, there's all these new entrants coming into this space. You know, how do you view this market shift and AWS's role and its continued market position? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Look, it's it's a fascinating and uh, and super exciting time to be in the space and in the technology world generally. And 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 I agree with you. I think when we look at the impact that AI has on all of our customers, on all of all the industries that we work in, um, I I fundamentally believe, and and we at AWS fundamentally believe that AI is going to change every single workload, every single industry, every single company, and and people are going to do things differently, and uh, has a massive potential for. Um, really improving, improving the effectiveness and the efficiency and the customer experience across every aspect of, of what almost every industry does from healthcare to financial services to consumer electronics to like the, the gamut of, of, um, uh, of industries. And so we're incredibly excited about that. I think the couple things that we see though is, is that it's not, um, you know, as you mentioned, it does, it's not replacing the old way of computing. It's, it's very complementary to that world because it turns out that when you go do AI, you also need a lot of data to feed those AI models. You need a lot of traditional compute infrastructure. You need a lot of analytics tools. You need a lot of databases, et cetera. And so it's very complementary to the business that we've built. And so um, you're right, we're, we're at AWS making a huge investment in AI, but as a complement to the bunch of the, the capabilities that we already have in the cloud. Because I think when you talk to, to companies out there and they say, how am I going to get real value out of AI? And that's what a lot of companies are actually thinking about and wrestling with today is how they get value out of it. Um, they know that their workloads are going to live in the cloud, right? These, the, these AI models are all running in the cloud. Your data needs to be in the cloud. And so there is, from our viewpoint, a real uh, pl positive flywheel there that if customers and enterprises can get all those workloads moving into the cloud, that's when they can really start to take advantage of AI and, and I think over the long term get the most benefit out of it. So Matt, uh, being the inventor of anything is awesome in itself and turning that into a massively scalable business uh, is as hard or harder and doing it year in uh, and year out. And you're putting up some just extraordinary uh, revenue numbers out there. I do have to ask, growth has slowed uh, to the 10 to 15%. Uh, I remember the days of 50, 60, 70% growth. Um, can you give us a little input, a uh, little feedback on that? But more importantly, how do you intend to keep driving that growth and staying ahead? Yeah, well there's a couple things. One is it's actually a little bit more than that. It's actually uh, 17, 18% now, and it's actually been accelerating each of the last four or five quarters. Uh, and, and I would say that there is, you know, look, there's a, there's a lot of large numbers in there too. At a, at a hundred billion dollar business, you're not going to grow 70%. Um, that's, you know, that's just massive growth. And so, in absolute terms, the business is growing actually faster than it ever has, and it's, it's growing absolute, in absolute terms faster than any of the competitors as well. So in, in, in absolute size, the business is actually growing at a faster rate than, than anyone else out there and than it ever has before. And so, um, you know, and, and I would say there's a couple of pieces to that, which is 
um, we we look at the long term of this business, and so we're we're happy with where the growth is, uh, and I think we'll we'll continue on that path. And we see a ton of headwind to the business, um, where or t- of headroom to the business where it can continue to grow for a really long period of time. You know, when I talk to customers out there, less than twenty percent of of workloads that we talk about are running in the cloud today, and so that that ignores even the massive amount of new cloud uh, Gen AI workloads that are going to happen. Just existing workloads. Only five, or only like a fifth of them, or less, have moved to the cloud. So enormous opportunity for customers um, to continue on that super important modernization and migration path that they've been on for a couple of decades now, as um, as the industry moves to the cloud. So there's there's a ton of potential there for us. We see uh, a massive amount of growth forward for the business, and we think we're very well positioned to take advantage of that. And part of that is because we invest in every layer of that stack. We invest in power. We invest in data centers. We invest in networks. We invest in our own silicon to make sure that we can deliver the best cost performance for customers. And so by innovating across all those layers of the stack and then building super innovative services on top of that, uh, we feel really excited about the the continued acceleration of growth that we'll we'll see for for many years to come. Yeah, thanks, Matt. You know, Matt, we we talked about uh, AWS being first in cloud, and of course that comes in a few different respective numbers. First into the market, now of course first as largest in the market. I'm really glad you pointed out the law of large numbers. Uh, it's not inconsequential that like you said, in, in overall growth, it's so substantial. Of course, as analysts, we wrestle with this. We wrestle with the fact that you know people are saying, oh, well, they're going 28%. Yeah, but they're going 28% over one tenth of the size. So it's been impressive. But we always have to, ma- you know, we're always matching that up on our side. You know, one of the th- you got to find a more interesting headline, of course. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, exactly. So, but one of the things that I think did ring true, and, and gosh, so many conversations we've had, so many reporters and press that we've been trying to kind of smooth this concept over, is that AWS was late to the Gen AI party. <laughs> Um, we know how methodical the company is. We know how you know it likes to do things, have a very, very strict sort of process for defining new products, rolling things out, making sure there's market fit. A lot of credit to be given there, but but Microsoft kind of jumped out of head. They had this open AI partnership. They didn't build anything per se, but they integrated someone else's technology, got out fast. Now, AWS now for the first time was sort of chasing. You know, it was sort of chasing, at least there was a perception of that. Talk a little bit about how the culture is dealing with that perception. And where do you think you are now versus what's in the market? Do you feel like you've you've closed the gap or even surpassed the competition at this point? Yeah, you know, look, I, I think that from our perspective, a lot of that was much more perception than reality. Um, and as we, you know, we've been involved in AI for for well over a decade publicly with AWS and even longer internally. And the most popular um, AI platform to build on is SageMaker out there in the market. And um, and as and we'd been working on generative AI models ourselves internally. But as ChatGPT came out and kind of the world realized kind of what some of these models were capable of, everybody else kind of rushed to go put a chatbot out there and, and be able to kind of slap it onto whatever capabilities they had. And what we saw is, is that customers also got super excited about that and ran to do proof of concepts. Uh, we, you know, honestly, we, uh, our, our, our take was we were going to take a step back and understand if this is really going to be a fundamental technology that every company is going to have at the core of everything that they do, it can't be a rushed on consumer application that just gets slapped onto the side that maybe has security after the fact and maybe has protections of your data after the fact. We kind of felt like we had to build that core layer first. And so we went and said, customers are going to want to make sure that all of their data is secure and never leaves their VPC or their, their kind of protected network environment. We went in and said, we know that security is going to have to be first as customers there. We also knew that, and we had this idea, actually, we didn't know, but we had the idea that if you look forward ahead, it's unlikely that there's just going to be one model for the world. There's probably going to be lots of different models, and maybe in combination, where you're going to need small models and big models, and you're going to need one model that's really good at doing kind of financial analysis, and another model that's really good at at doing indexing and 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 that was our view because we'd spent a, we we are we had spent a lot of time internally working with these models understanding how they worked, and so we actually spent that time to go and actually build that platform because we knew that if we're work, our customers are enterprises not consumers and so from an AWS perspective we wanted a platform that everybody else could go build on, and so we knew that we had to have a lot of different models. We knew that we had to have an easy way for people to build RAG indexes. We knew that pe- you know people were going to want more and more capabilities to go build. AI applications um, in a secure way because at some point customers' data is their their differentiating factor. 
And so that's what we did with Bedrock. We went and built that. And, um, and now you're starting to see customers who, I would say over the last 12 months or so, like scrambled to launch as many proof of concepts as they can, right? And you'd go talk to enterprises, I'm sure many of you have done this, where people launched hundreds of proof of concepts. And they, they came up with some really cool ideas and they're really neat. And now they're starting to look at it and one, the bill's really big for all those proof of concepts. Two, they're not really sure which of those are gonna deliver real enterprise value. And three, as they move from proof of concept to production, they're realizing that actually I need all of those things that I need to figure out how when I integrate this in with my enterprise data, is it secure? How do I have the right access controls, et cetera? And so we're actually now seeing just a, a, a really, really, really rapid acceleration of customers adopting and actually building real production applications on Bedrock in AWS because it's where their data is, it's where their applications live, it has the right security controls around it, um, and customers are, 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 are loving that model. And so, you know, I do, I think there was the perception that we didn't get something out there quickly, but it's because we were kind of building that, that platform for the long term. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm, I'm delighted with where we are, and I think our, our enterprise customers really like where we are too. Yeah, so Matt, uh, two things there. So first of all, we're also seeing in our research in the enterprise, people moving from what I will call experiments to POCs, and then at some point to be able to scale. There are some, some fast movers, some rabbits who are currently deriving benefit today uh, in big areas. And the second thing, uh, we recognized, uh, my company has recognized your approach, and I think Dan's uh, as well, which, which was a build something uh, long-term, uh, build something that's multi-model, uh, build something that uh, really addresses the, the concerns, which is security and data management. And uh, you have done that, in our view, uh, an effective job uh, at, at doing this. I, I do want to hit on uh, something that you mentioned uh, before, and that was silicon. So I've been chronicling your journey of first person silicon, and of course, merchant silicon for a long time. Dan and I have, both we appreciate been in that too. <laughs> no, you, you got you were, that. I presented you were, it. You were early into Graviton, and we appreciate that. Uh, oh, I, I didn't know you knew that, but uh, uh, thank you. Dan and I both uh, uh, were inside of one of your key development hubs in Austin, Texas, uh, where we saw it uh, first and foremost. And, and you have a first party silicon strategy plus merchant silicon. Can you talk a little bit about how you balance those two? What's the strategy? Uh, behind and maybe you know what's the benefit to AWS customers? Yeah, well, it's it's all about the benefit to AWS customers. Th there's a couple things. Is we our, our view is I just want our customers to have the best selection of all of the technologies available to them, and so they can trade off what they think is the right technology with the right cost point for the the right use case that they have. And so our view is is. There is, I mean, this is a massive space, and so there is room for a lot of these players. And, and if you take even the general purpose compute space to start with, we've been partners with Intel and AMD for, for multiple decades, and we saw a space for Graviton, which is our own um, kind of custom silicon uh, ARM-based processors. And we saw an opportunity where we could go build uh, a processor that was uh, lower power, higher or lower cost, and, and we thought we could get to much higher performance, which I think we've now proven with, uh, with um, the Graviton, uh, Graviton 4 and, and 3 and the last couple of generations that we've had. And so from that perspective, we've seen, we still can see, by the way, we still have a massive business of Intel and AMD processors of people running inside of AWS, and Graviton is a really, really large business where many customers get a huge cost performance benefit, actually an absolute performance benefit at, at much lower costs. Uh, and so we like that, and customers love that choice, and we think that's great. About five years ago, we saw this trend of, of accelerators being a key part of that compute platform, and we've been partners with NVIDIA, again, for well over a, a decade plus, running in AWS. We had the first NVIDIA instance, I can't remember which year it is now, but, um, but uh, when we launched uh, many years ago. And so NVIDIA is an incredibly important part for, partner for us. Today, the vast majority of AI workloads run on NVIDIA, and they will for a long time. They, they make a really great offering. And so, and AWS is the best place to run NVIDIA workloads. That's why NVIDIA chose AWS as the place where they're running all of their research workloads, and we're building a massive um, a Gen AI cluster together for their next generation of NVIDIA products. And so we're super excited about that partnership, and we think that it delivers a lot of value for customers. However, five years ago, we also saw 
that there's going to be room for more. And we thought we could do the same thing for accelerators and um, that we did for, for general purpose. And so we went and we built Inferentia and Trainium, which are inference and training platforms. And, uh, and we're incredibly excited about that. Trainium 2 is going to be coming out at the end of this year. And I think that platform is going to be really, really impactful for many of these workloads where I, I feel confident that it's going to be the best price performance offering for, for many workloads. Not all of them, by the way. Many workloads are going to be optimized and they're going to run the best on NVIDIA. And some of them we think can be on Trainium. And so we think that mix where customers can pick between a lot of different options just makes AWS a better place to run every single workload that people want to run. And so we think that choice Matt, is super yeah. important. Matt, just to, as a, as a follow-up, um, even with your first party silicon, at least from my vantage point, you've found a way to differentiate with merchant silicon providers uh, like NVIDIA, uh, like yeah. AMD, you know, EFA was uh, an mm -hmm. example of that. C can you talk a little bit about it? Is that the go forward plan to differentiate, uh, you know, coming up with ways to yeah. differentiate in merchant as well? Yeah, it, it, absolutely, there's part of, you know, look, part of the benefit that we get is we get a lot of view into what these compute workloads look like and how they operate in our environment. And we have that benefit where, you know, when you when you put a chip into an AWS data center, it doesn't have to go into a, a, a unknown data center, which lots of folks have to deal with a lot of different environments. We have to deal with one environment, which is just ours. And so we can bring some of that learning to optimize that environment around um, uh, our partners as well. And so we, we do oftentimes custom uh, parts with, with Intel as an example, where we'll make custom modifications to make sure that the Intel processor actually gives better performance for customers in an AWS environment than they can get anywhere else because we really know how it's going to operate. Um, you mentioned EFA. We do that with, with NVIDIA as well. I think um, you know for a long time, uh, everyone was viewing InfiniBand as the best networking capability for these clusters, which by the way, InfiniBand works really well for small clusters that are relatively static. But as you start to expand them and they're growing uh, up and down and scaling and they're getting much larger, InfiniBand becomes actually a little fragile and is actually a, a big source of errors and, and faults inside of these really large clusters. And it actually doesn't scale to the scale that these training clusters need. Um, and so working with NVIDIA, EFA, which is our, our um, custom networking that, that gives you very low latency, high throughput performance via an Ethernet network, um, that's a, a thing that we've been partnering together with them on, and it's part of why they're excited about partnering with us, because we can deliver that differentiated performance uh, at the scale and, and flexibility that we need. Well, Matt, our, our research actually validates both points on the EFA and, and, and you know use of Ethernet. We're finding that mm -hmm. to be true and more scalable and a bigger opportunity. Also, what you said about the custom AI silicon, we're seeing a growth rate, our intelligence is saying something about 20% faster growth than these uh, multi, these broader purpose GPUs uh, in the years to come. And I think that's why there's so much excitement, enthusiasm and demand, and we'll certainly be tracking closely Tranium 2, Inferentia and all the work. And I just want to thank you on behalf of both Patrick and myself and the 6.5 for taking some time to join us here. I know you have the big event, a lot of analysts and others in town to hear about what you're doing in generative AI. We look yeah. forward to catching up with you again soon. Awesome, thank you both for having me. Thanks. And thank you everybody for tuning into the 6.5. We are on the road. We were joined here today by AWS CEO, Matt Garman. Thanks for being part of our community. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our episodes. For Patrick and myself, time to say goodbye. See you all later.